Okay, so that's where I work. And basically what I do is I take the first clock and I remove the dial from it. I label it. So this one I labeled CS196R and I give it a container. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that for every clock that I have in the shop. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I go to my next shelf, seven, eight, nine. Then my next shelf, 10, 11, 12. I actually have a few more clocks, but that's all I got on my shelf right now. Then down here are the containers that hold the dials for the grandfather clocks. Or if it's a cuckoo clock, it may have the uh, whistles and bellows, the weights, the various things that I don't need while I'm repairing it. Basically what I do is, after I've um, removed all the clocks from the cases, whether it's a wall clock, cuckoo clock, grandfather clock, I removed it from the case, removed the dial, and I'm left with just the movement. So then what I do is, one by one, I will clean each movement. So instead of repairing this clock all by itself from start to finish, I will clean all 12 of these movements. And actually I've cleaned a number of them already. Then once I finish cleaning them all, what I'm gonna do is disassemble each one and analyze all the parts, figure out exactly what I need to do in terms of repair, in terms of any broken wheels, missing teeth, um, anything that I need to order, whether it's springs, cables, so I can order those right away for all the clocks, okay? So I will disassemble one clock, then two clock, all the way through to 12. And then what I do is I have a notepad here, and I have the CS196R, I give it a little nickname, and I make any notes as I'm taking it apart, various things that I notice that I know that's wrong with it. And then what I'll do is I'll measure the pivot sizes for the strike, chime, and the time. I'll show you an earlier one I did. So on this one, for example, it was a French clock, and it just had a strike and a time. So I'll measure the different wheel uh, pivot sizes that I need to fix, and I'll make any notes if I have a bent pivot or anything like that, or I need to replace a broken pivot. So I'll make a sheet for each clock. Okay, CS202, Howard Miller, chain, grandfather clock. Owner is uh, a guy named Brown. So then I'll have the appropriate label in each clock so that I don't confuse any of them. And so I'll disassemble them all, measure all the pivots, and take any notes on what I need to do. Then I'll actually uh, bush all the holes that I need to bush on every clock, one at a time. So I'll bush this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, and then that one, and so forth. Then after I've bushed them all, then I'll start back here again, and I will pre-drill the bushings the correct size or close to the size of the pivot hole for each clock. Then I'm going to broach one at a time. So I'll broach this out, make sure all the wheels are smooth in there. And then what I'll do is I will assemble that movement when I finish broaching it and, rep and repairing anything else I need with it. Then I'll do that with this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And as I assemble each one, I'll then put them on the rack for testing and I'll let them run for a week, usually at least a week. All right. So then uh, they start popping off. So maybe the first week I don't actually finish any clocks, but I'll clean them all. I'll bush them all, get them all ready for broaching. Then the following week I'll get like seven clocks done in a matter of a few days. And then by the second or third week, I've got all 12 done. So last week I finished seven clocks. Um, but the week before that, I only finished like uh, one or two because I was finishing. So I, I do them in sets. So I usually, like if I get a new clock in tomorrow, I'll put it in this assembly line. But if, once I start these 12 clocks and I'm well into them, I typically won't add a 13th clock to my line. I'll finish all 12. And then by the time I finish all 12, I might have seven or eight new clocks in and I'll start my next assembly line. And I found that this is the most 
uh, efficient way to get the most clocks in the shortest amount of time. So um, I don't know how you guys operate or if you like this method, but this is how I maximize my time and uh, find that uh, produces good results. And the more clocks I do, the more that seems to come in. So any undone project, uh, I just, I finish them all. And if I get stuck on one, I just set it aside and I put it at the end of the line. Sometimes I just step away from a clock and uh, next time I go back to it, the solution pops right out at me. All right, so thanks for watching. Thanks for following me. I hope you liked uh, my new organization of my shop from a video yesterday. And um, I hope that you can visualize my assembly line. After I've uh, disassembled all, all these clocks, I'll, sh I'll do another video, show you that process, so on and so forth. I'll do a short little video of every step of the way. All right, thanks for watching.